Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is actually all about Pokemon Go. I wanted to make today's video the third episode of Hack for Hire, but I didn't want to just swarm your week with one single single subject. So I wanted to make a video answering some basic questions, like an FAQ style video on hacking Pokemon Go in 2020. There's very few legitimate ways to go about it, and I actually forgot to pull one up. Hold on. All right, I got it pulled up. I'm all set. I promise this is that's hopefully the only pause in this video. So first of all, I want to say thank everybody who's subscribed. Uh, I record all these videos in one day and then I schedule upload them. So obviously this number hasn't changed. But I've said it in the last two videos this week. I want to push this number to 3,000 and eventually 3,501. The reason I want 3,501 is is because I want to have more subs than my original channel that got shut down. Little hint, it was because of Pokemon Go hacking. And I want to make a video about the story of why my old channel was shut down. So let's push this number. I don't like asking for subscribers, but let's push this number and let's get there. So today's video is actually, like I said, all about Pokemon Go and the legitimate ways to play as well as the not so legitimate ways to play and me giving my feedback at least on the uh, tools that I have used. So the first thing that you know I really want to go over is playing the game legitimately. Obviously it, the game is a ton of fun. Don't go in and I'm not condoning spoofing, cheating, or hacking even though I do it. I'm actually going and I want to give you guys my true opinion. So I play both legitimately and spoofed. I play, and when I play spoofed, I'll spoof for like a day to Zaragoza, Spain, because that's just probably the best place to go on the planet in order to hit massive amounts of Pokestops all at once without even having to move. If I'm not in Zaragoza, Spain, I'm in my hometown at a local park. Uh, if it is nice outside, I turn my spoofer off and I actually go to that park and physically walk around it to try to get some exercise, because that's what Pokemon Go's... Part of Pokemon Go's goal was, was to get people outside to exercise. Let's be real. There are ways to play two Pokemon Go accounts at the same time on the same phone legitimately. Sort of. So as you can see, there's Pokemon Go and there's the Google Play Store version, and then there's the Samsung App Store version. So if you go in, you can actually download the Pokemon Go straight from the Play Store, you know, no problems. Uh, I just have this up because this is also a place where you can download the APK directly without the Play Store if you have a tablet that doesn't have the Play Store on it. But you can also go to a site like APK Mirror, which has the Samsung Galaxy App Store version on it, and you can download the APK directly from here as well. The reason that the Samsung Galaxy App Store version and the Play Store version can exist on the same device is because their app signatures are different and their app installation directories are different. So with that, that means you can log into two, to, two accounts at once and play the game that way. It's super simple. The other nice thing about that is you can also go in and you can have like an auto touch uh, application on your phone and have four different spots on your screen that will always auto touch uh, for doing like battles at the same time on the same gym with both accounts at the same time. It's kind of as crazy as it sounds, but I have done it and it's a ton of fun. But that's starting to get into the exploit area, and my my recommendation for that is, uh, I think it's called Quick Touch for Android. Yeah, Quick Touch Automatic Clicker. Um, I can release a, an ad uh, an app or ad removed version eventually if people want it. I have an ad removed version where it gets no ads. And it's, again, the tool is fantastic. I've been using this for many games over many years, and I've never had a ban because of it. But let's get into the spoofing and how that works. So yes, you can root your Android phone, and you can go in and you can spoof. But that that method of uh, Pokemon Go spoofing definitely has a timer as to how long it's actually going to work for. Because when you root your phone, what you have to do with Pokemon Go to get the root method working is A, root your device and hope your device can be rooted. B, 
you then have to install Fake GPS Pro or some other form of a fake GPS app. Then you have to install Lucky Patcher. You have to use Lucky Patcher with root permissions to, mod to move the fake GPS Pro app or whatever GPS spoofing app you use to the system directory of the device and make it a system app. From there, you have to uninstall Lucky Patcher, you have to uninstall Magisk Manager, you have to unroot your device most of the time. Sometimes there's updates and hiding methods work uh, for hiding your root and hiding Magisk Manager, but that doesn't always work. Um, Pokemon Go uses uh, Google Safety Net for their anti-cheat and Sometimes safety net stays up to date and it keeps up and it detects the methods that otherwise worked yesterday, let's say, for bypassing their root detection. But that's why I say spoofing with root is very dangerous because as soon as they detect root on your device, you can actually just, they'll flag your account on their end, review it and see if you're spoofing, and then they'll possibly ban you or give you a seven day ban or even erase your account and you start over with nothing not a fun time. I've had it happen to me. Don't let that happen to you. The other thing is there's finally two methods that you can bot. Well, okay, I shouldn't say bot, but bot slash spoof on Pokemon Go on Android. For a long time, we were stuck with only the root methods, and that's a nightmare, as I just explained. PG Sharp is a fantastic application. It's totally worth the five bucks. I paid three months in advance my girlfriend also, I got her using it, and if, my, I don't want to say my girlfriend's dumb when it comes to technology, but she's definitely not, I wouldn't say she's technology impaired, but she's definitely, like, she has her bearings enough to understand it if you explain it to her once or twice, unlike most people on this planet. But if my girlfriend can honestly use this, or even then, my I tried explaining it to my dad, and he was like, I actually kind of get it. If my dad can use PG Sharp and he's like 80 years old, uh, almost 80 years old, he's 78, <laughs> he's nearly 80 years old. If my dad can do it, you guys can do this too. And I have run into some real idiot people that I think can't use this app, but that's different. That's something entirely different. Let's not go there. I don't, this isn't supposed to be a rant video. I'm holding back. Breathe. I've ran into some idiot people. Oh my God. The, if you aren't smart enough to be able to simply install an application on your phone with simple setup instructions, change back to a flip phone, please. Anyway, rant over, I promise, rant over. So you either pay the five bucks and you get the monthly thing, or every so often they do open up the free trial and you can get free trial keys, but they are limited because people will abuse the free trial keys, which, eh, whatever. Um... On top of that, though, you get things like Enhanced Catch, so you can actually catch Pokemon uh, that even while they're like attacking you and the circle around them disappears. You can catch them while they're attacking. You can set it to always uh, excellent catches, always great catches, or a combination of nice, great, and excellent, and it will randomly change between, which I recommend doing, because... If you're doing excellent every single catch, Niantic will maybe eventually, or they might already have one, we just don't know it, they'll eventually detect that you're always getting excellent catches, and you don't want that. Set it to only excellent when you're going for like legendaries and stuff like that from raids. That's the only time you should set it to only excellent. You can all set it also to always curveball. So that's just free XP to help you level up your account. That's what's great about PG Sharp. You can also use GPX files for auto-walking, you can uh, set it, uh, set your phone up with a Pokemon Go watch. I recommend using a Gocha over a, um, like the official Nintendo one. The Gochas will actually auto catch Pokemon. It'll auto spin Pokestops instead of having to sit there and hit the button every time you feel it vibrate. That's not worth the headache. Uh, and if you set up the two together, it's basically a botting experience. It's, it really is. You're auto catching Pokemon, you're auto spinning Pokestops, and you're walking to hatch eggs. What better method is there? Well, there's Charbot. Charbot works by USB with your Android device. If you're rooted 
Charbot works even better uh, because it can always curveball. But the way Charbot works is it's a bot that's coded in Python. And what it does is it reads your screen through USB on your computer by ADB commands to see what's going on in the game, and it automates that process. It's slow. It's very slow. It's incredibly slow. Eventually, I'll try to make a video uh, with um, C Sharp on how to make a program that does something very similar to Charbot, where it sees your screen, it'll automatically throw a Pokeball and detect a Pokemon, etc., etc. But that's a while down the road. Doing it in C Sharp may have been better, but Charbot is very slow at seeing what's going on on your screen because it takes a screenshot basically. I, it's got to be only like once a second, really. It's kind of terrible. If they would just set up a looping code that takes a screenshot every quarter of a second, looks at that screenshot real quick, deletes that screenshot, or keeps maybe 10 of them, and then deletes all 10 and then starts over and loops through it, it would be a far faster solution, and this would be a viable solution. I don't think Charbot's worth the money, especially because I think it's also 5 bucks a month, and granted, yes, it or granted, no, it does not offer spoofing. If you combine it with an app like PG Sharp, you're getting the full botting solution. I don't recommend doing that because it's just it, it's a lot easier to just pick up a Gotcha Evolved or a Pokemon Go Plus Watch or even like the Pokemon Go Ball thing from like uh, from Nintendo that you can use with uh, Pokemon. Pikachu or Eevee for the Nintendo Switch you can also use with uh, Pokemon Go. So I don't really recommend this solution. But that's pretty much all there is for Android. So what about iOS? Because I get asked about that a lot as well. Well, there's a couple solutions for... There's more than a couple solutions for iOS. But the true solutions that I would trust are iSpoofer and iPogo. So iSpoofer is currently down. We don't know when it's coming back. Maybe Niantic reached out to them and was like, hey, stop it. We don't know. I don't think anybody knows, actually. I've tried to look into it, and I didn't find any information on why their site is down. But uh, it's gone. And actually, let me pull it up on archive.org. Hold on. So I definitely have a feeling that Niantic has reached out to iSpoofer and told them to stop it. I am very much convinced of this now that I'm looking at the website through archive.org. Because this is 2019, and in 2019 they had the iSpoofer PC, which is very much probably similar to Charbot, and they had iSpoofer for Pogo, which is probably for, um, whatchamacallit, that dog, what the hell? Oh, it's because there's a dog walking towards a dog. Yeah, there's a dog walking towards a dog, towards two dogs, actually. Oh, no, that's my neighbor across the street. Anyway, so, sorry, ADHD is a thing, man. So it looks like I would be very much convinced, I'm very much convinced that Niantic reached out to them and was like, hey, stop it, because as you can see, they had like the four ninety five a month, and they suddenly dropped the iOS version on August 31st, it looks like, and then their website went down starting in September. Versus, as you can see here, there's like the IPA download right here that actually was stored on archive.org. Wait, what? It was on archive.org? What? Download.iSpoofer.com. Okay, so we need to keep that in mind. Hold on. Ah, oh, that's not what I wanted. So what we're going to do is this. This wasn't supposed to turn into like a network discovery thing like this, but or a hack for hire thing like this. But you can actually still download the IPA files. That's interesting. So as you can see, they did have an iOS version where you would download the app and it was a modified IPA file for a joystick on screen in game. It looks like it stopped at 1.59, even though they show having it up to 2019 so it, that's probably not entirely true so it looks like in the free version for ios you had joysticks uh teleport iv list uh, you could check up to 10 iv encounters at a time you could do enhanced throw 
and you can do auto generate GPX. On the pro version, you also get um, auto walking, you get unlimited checks, you get nearby gym stop Pokemon radar on screen, you get nearby gym slot scanner, uh, coordinate feed, you get a feed radar, you get a uh, fast catch trick, and auto generate GPX. So enhanced throw, that's what I was talking about with PG Sharp, where it like, it's always a curveball. It's always an excellent catch. It's always a great catch. It's something like that. But the fact that I spoofer is down like this, it looks like it's probably down for good. And I actually, I wonder, can I still download these? I'm going to find out and we're going to rip these apart in a, uh, like investigations video of some kind. I don't want to call them virus investigations and stuff like that because it's not a virus and that's also a Mudahar thing. Uh, some ordinary gamer. One of my favorite people to watch. He's so cool. Anyway, so that's enough about iSpoofer. We've spent quite a bit of time on iSpoofer. It looks like iSpoofer... I would be very surprised if iSpoofer comes back. I think iSpoofer is dead. It's just fair to call it at this point. So, iPogo. This is really the last... Um, legitimate method on iOS, I would say. So with iPogo, you can do pretty much everything that PG Sharp does. You can auto catch, auto spin, Pokemon Go uh, stuff. You can block encounters on less shiny. That's something I'd love to see in PG Sharp. Um, you can do single click item deletion. You can do dedicated and friendly team. Uh, teaming. There's also the built-in virtual Pokemon Go Plus, so you don't even need a Gotcha Evolve or a Pokemon Go Plus. Uh, One-click item bag cleaner. There's a block non-shiny encounters, live feeds overlay, fast catch, faster map loading. I would love to see this implemented because, oh my god, there's too many damn Porygon on my screen today. Let's see. See full comparison. Let's see the rest. Uh... There's also teleporting and sniping. There's the feeds for raids, quests, and other things. There's the maps and overlays, nearby Pokemon overlay. There's uh, favorite routes and hotspots and stuff. They just added favorites to PG Sharp. PG Sharp is very new, so I don't hold it against them at all that they haven't gotten to some of these features. Um, there's the stats inventory, joystick overlay, enhanced throw, auto walking, encounter IV, Nearby Gym Scanner, built-in Pogo Plus, which is really cool. There's the one-click item bag cleaner, live feed overlay, fast catch, fast map loading, and block non-shiny encounters, which I would love to see on PG Sharp. So this is looks like it's really the last option for Pokemon Go on iOS that I would consider legitimate. How much is it? I think it was five bucks I saw. Oh, you have to do it through Patreon. Okay. I mean, whatever. So it doesn't say. Visit the Patreon website. Four ninety nine a month. That's not a big deal. That's pretty much the same. And then there's the Pokedex 100. So you can see 100 IVs and stuff like that that are popping up. Um, so really, that's all the methods as of this moment that I personally know of for botting and hacking Pokemon Go. Um, or spoofing, I guess I should say. Eventually in the future, we'll revisit this subject and we'll try to remake Charbot together because I think Charbot is a fantastic solution because it's completely undetectable. It looks like a human player playing the game and it doesn't actually spoof, but I guarantee you with a rooted device, there's a way to spoof via USB. I'm almost sure of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, it was a ton of fun to make and I just wanted to share my knowledge with Pokemon Go. If you want more Pokemon Go stuff, let me know in the comments down below because my old channel, that's what blew up my old channel was Pokemon Go. And I'm not thinking that's going to blow up my channel this time because Pokemon Go is not as popular. But if you still want more content from it, you know, let me know. It'll be a ton of fun. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.